Hello guys, this is Clint Locklear with Wolfer Nation and Trapping Radio. This is a response to a internet troll that has decided to put his nose where he didn't belong. So I thought we would just spend a few minutes, if you don't mind. And first off, I want to explain what the whole mess was about. Because even though he says he didn't, he's called me dishonest, misleading, basically a crook and all this other stuff, which I'm gonna read his quotes to you. I'm being all uh, legal legal on this because he's threatened to sue me. He's threatened to call all kind of people, which you're getting ready to find out. And we're gonna talk about why the pricing of the hammer is the way that it is before we get to the response to the troll. And there's the troll that I'm referring to is Bill Williams from Mississippi. And he's got a YouTube channel called Life on Treehand Creek. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it. T-R-E-H-A-N Creek. Never heard of the dude before this. Didn't know anything about it. Um, he's not a customer of mine. As far as I know, he's never bought anything from me. He's just a busybody little troll on the internet wanting to screw with people. So the latter part of this is going to be directly to him. And if y'all want to join in and see this man's character, y'all are more than welcome to do that. This is Kyle Claymore 2. That costs $29. This is what is in it. There is some liquid mice and there is some hammer. Now, if you buy this by itself, that is $19. If you buy this by itself, it is $23. If you buy 16 ounces of this, which is the size of this, it's $92. Now, anybody that's got some of this so far, and Travis can, to, uh, can probably agree with me here, this smells almost as strong as this, doesn't it, Travis? Mm -hmm. The hammer is way more powerful than this than just putting a little bit with this because it's very clear when you smell it the first time. So we did an added value to this. Now, I did not say this on the last video because most normal people that have enough rational thought to understand anything that they ever buy does not need someone to use the word added value. But if you want to get into trapping and you want to be able to get these two products, but you don't need that much volume, you can buy this and save $13. And it is a savings, Mr. Williams, which we're getting ready to get into. But this gives you the advantage. So when most people use baits or lures, they have a bait, they have a lure, sometimes they have a gland lure, sometimes they have urine. But if you want to get this combination, which is proven to be a coyote killing machine combination, you're going to spend $23 on this and this. This smells almost as strong as this, which costs $92. And it has some base in there because this is the bait. This is the lure. This also has sexual parts in here. So it's kind of like a gland lure all at the same time. But you want to use this combination for many different reasons. $29 instead of $42. That's the reason we came up with this. Now here's the real reason we came up with this. Here's our diabolical scheme to, crook, uh, to make crooks of ourselves as far as trappers go because of all of the stuff I've done online and all the stuff that I've done inside of permaculture, I get a ton of people that are not trappers, that are not seasoned trappers. They're not people that know anything about bait and lure. They really don't know how to set a trap. Most of these people have a problem. Now, they only have like say one bobcat that's killing their chickens or one fox that's killing their ducks or they have a couple of raccoons that's getting in and killing their quail, because that's normally where these questions come from. They just need a little bit to get the job done. Now, for them to spend $42 to get these two is a big interest price or entrance price into trapping. This is $29, saves them $13. They don't have to know anything about the bait. They don't have to know anything about the lure. They, if they got cattle problems or a cat problem, they squirt it down a hole. They can watch someone make a dirt hole on YouTube. They don't have to worry about how long it lasts, how much to use, all that stuff. It's pre-mixed, bait, lure, everything into one. That's the value added part of this. That's the reason 
that we came up with the claymores that way. The other part of the reason we did this is there's a lot of trappers that don't set a ton of traps. They got families and jobs and, and they're working and it's a lot of people, it's just a, a very part-time hobby. It's something they go do with their kids. So when they go to spend $43 for these two, which for someone that runs a lot of traps is a better deal, which I say in the Cow Claymore video one than this, if you're running a lot of traps, but for I would say over half of the trappers out there that actually set traps, they don't need more than this. So why would they spend $43? So we combine these two into this as a money saving to get all the advantages of this without having to know anything about it, you just go use it. That is why we come up with a pricing on that. Nowhere in the video did I talk about ounces because you don't know the formula for this. You don't know how much hammers in this jar and you don't know how much liquid mice is in this jar. But all this is gonna play out here in a second because there was a guy that had to stick his nose and start calling me uh, basically everything that everybody should stay away from in business about that. Now, I'm kind of curious if we're gonna get any messages from the golden trap because the golden trap knows all. The golden trap has spoken. My buddy Deadpool, I'm so sorry if I offended you, but the golden trap speaks the truth. So we're gonna roll with this a little bit. Normally I don't respond to trolls on the internet because most of the time guys, they are nothing but antis, crazy liberals, everything else. That's kind of what I thought this response was from, was from a crazy liberal. But then I saw that he had a channel, so I looked on his channel, and it looks like he does go out in the woods. I'll give him that much. So I took it a little more serious. And my response to him really got him up mad. See, I've got a couple of theories. One is bullies don't like for anybody to stand up to them. Bullies can't stand that they don't get their way. And bullies don't understand why everybody doesn't obey them. And y'all know me well enough to know I'm not obeying anybody but my wife. So that's not going to happen. But I'm going to use his quotes because, like I said, he's threatened me with several lawsuits. He's, he said, if I do this response, if I do anything online, which you're going to hear his quotes in a minute, that he's going to take me to court. And I called him some things in my comment, which I think was completely justified and I still stand by them. This is a quotation from him. Obviously, you failed, you failed math or either you are purposely misleading the public, end quote, which I thought was strange because if you got to buy both of these for 42 and you need the response that you get from this and you did this, how is I misleading anybody? And that's pretty simple math. So I wouldn't get that wrong. Then he goes on this tirade, which I refer to him as a liberal person that's a global warming zealot that wants to go out and change the math problems to make the science match what they wanted to do. So he got stuck on this crazy idea that somehow I'm trying to mislead trappers because this is 16 ounces and this is 14 ounces. And if you total those amount ounces up, it's so much per price per ounce. This is not the same amount of ounces as this, which I never claimed for it to be. And that's where all of this started, where he's now threatening and slandering me and doing everything else that he thinks he's justified to do because he wants me to obey him and come out with like a great big hypothesis and a dissertation on the amount of ounces that are in these two things and the amount of ounces that are in this one thing. And he got stuck on this. And he got furious when nobody would listen to him. So we're gonna go on, but that's what started it. He thinks I'm being dishonest because there's more ounces here than there is here. You don't know which one of these are in here as far as the value, $92. $19. I never said anything about ounces. 
In the middle of this, he says, are you still with me so far? I did the math get too complicated for you. See, in my comment, I called him a pompous ass. And that really seemed to get him upset because he thought that was a smear on him. No, sir, that's not a smear on you. When you act pompous, that is, you, that is anybody's observation on what you're acting like. And you're acting like a pompous ass, so I called you a pompous ass. When you ask a 50-year-old grown man that's been in business, self-employed for 20 years, is the math getting too complicated for me? That is, by the definition, pompous. And when I called you a troll, everybody should go, after this video, and look up the definition of an internet troll. That's you, dude. That's not a smear on you. That's your actions. So you can call me a Southerner, even if you mean a bad way, but I'm a Southerner. I'm Appalachian. I'm a trapper. I'm a libertarian. You can say all of those things about me, and I'm not going to get mad because that's just my actions of my life that leads you down that path of where I am. So if you act like a pompous ass and someone calls you a pompous ass, it's not a smear on you. You're just being a pompous ass and everybody that just listened to that quote knows that you're a pompous ass. Then, he, then a quotation, are you lost yet? Pompous? Quotation, long way from saving 13 bucks as you falsely claim in the video. Who's, who's you? Use me, as you falsely claim. Travis, in just regular English, does that mean someone's lying? He is. He is or it is? It is. It is, yeah. <laughs> I don't make the rules. Jesus does. Amen. So, that's just the way that is. But that's where he starts. You, talking to me, Clint, falsely claiming in the video. Quotation, don't mislead the public, Clint. It is against the law. Quotation from Mr. Bill Williams. To do a fair and honest ad video. So my videos aren't fair and they're not honest. Does that mean like he's like thinking that I'm a straight up guy, Travis? Uh, no. Okay. I'm just wondering, you know, because to me, community... Language is always something I think Americans have gotten confused. And see, Bill Clinton got away with what he got away with because he wanted to know the definition of is. What is your definition of is? Because he wanted to play games with the, the language. Language is very simple to anybody that's not wanting to play games with it. Communication is just communicating with one human being to the other. What he just said was, I was a liar and I'm cheating trappers. You question my integrity, you're going to get a response. Then he says, quotation, take video down or remake it to show an honest comparison, end quote. Quotation, or should I just send it to the Federal Trade Commission, question mark, end quote. So he's telling me what to do because I must obey all internet trolls and he's threatening me with the Federal Trade Commission. Go right ahead. This is me. I started off my response very simply by saying trolls like you on the internet crack me up. Look up the definition of troll. That's you, Mr. Williams. Then I talk about projecting because that's normally what happens. If dishonest people see other people make a claim, they automatically assume it's dishonest because they try to make everything in their world seem on the same plane. So they have to assume that everybody's dishonest as they are. So that's the only conclusion I could come up with with his little craziness over the ounces. And I go into the production thing with him. Said he's like a global warring zealot wanting to change the math problem, which he did. I said it never, I never said it was cheaper by the ounce, which is ridiculous. I said it was value added. Calling me uh, dishonest and threatening me. That's what, that's what, uh, because that's what he did. He's calling me dishonest. And he's threatened me with the Federal Trade Commission. I called him petty because he is. In the first, in the video I did on this, I said, watch the first video because I just didn't want to repeat the same thing over and over again. If I come up with a Claymore 3 or a Bobcat Claymore, 
it's going to be pretty after a while that everybody just kind of understand it. I just didn't want to go down the same path. I say in the video, go to the first claim more and it gets into this more detail. I say he's a self-righteous who's, he's, I talk about him talking from a self-righteous pulpit preaching to us with his grand wisdom. I call him a pompous ass. I told him you choose to play the high priest in the witch, the witch Salem hunts because that's all he's doing is being a busybody. And then my, my, and this is for me, my response is simple to you, you self-righteous prick. Go F yourself or go F your dishonest self. Why would I say that? Because everybody here has watched all of my comments on YouTube. 99.9% .9 of them are always positive. I want trappers to do the best they can. When someone questions my integrity, I'm not going to sit there and go, yes, please, sir, heap on some more dishonesty on me and call me whatever you want. No, no, no. I'm a grown man. That ain't going to happen. Then Tim gets involved, meat trapper. We are friends. And this is what Tim says. Your reply to the video shows either malice, which it was, or simple arrogance. Which again, it did that too. Malice and arrogance is pretty clear from his comment. Then Tim goes in explaining value added. He uses the word cowardly because he threatened me with the FTC, which that's pretty cowardly. Calls him out for not being a member of his own state trapping association. That's what Tim said. Apparently, the guy kind of does the same thing to Tim on his thing. Tim knew exactly who this dude was. Reply, this is back from Bill Williams. First, there was no personal attack on Clint. Are you serious, dude? Do we need to go back through the quotes I just said? Because there's more coming. I mean, we'll refresh everybody's memory because there's plenty more attacks on Clint, slandering me and my product. That, sir, is a false, I mean, just an outright lie is what, is what that is. Then he threatens us with the YouTube rules. Then another quote, me being potentially misleading. And then he does what all people like him want to do. They want to join the victim Olympics and pull out their victim cards. And he goes all through this little thing about, well, I'm a new trapper. And if this is the way you need new trappers, people need to see how you treat new trappers and all that type stuff. Quit being a whining little girl. That's a better word than I was getting ready to use, since you don't like cussing. So he tries to pull that out. See, with the golden trap and the Deadpool t-shirt, all that bounces off me, man. None of that guilt sticks with me. From you are a crazy liberal. So you can take your victim card and stick it where the sun don't shine, as far as I'm concerned. And then you start talking about our little clique, talking about me, Tim, and Chip. Now, again... Little click, is that is that someone that's trying to look for a, a nice way to have a debate or talk about information the way he says he wants to? No, that's pompous. He assumes, and I'm using that word assume because assume usually means making an ass out of you and me. He assumes how Tim knows he's not a member of the Mississippi Trappers Association. Then he says, me and the president are thick as fleas, quote, I pretty much bet the president is the one who claimed I refuse to join, quote. Quotation, this tells you all you need to know about this dude as far as being a trapper. No one asked me. So someone had to give him a personal ask for him to support what he says he support. Most people do that because, I don't know, it's kind of the right thing to do. And then he goes on, but don't spread your lies about me, Tim. It will get you trouble you don't want. Again, that's a threat. But see, the thing about bringing in Chip, Chip didn't have nothing to do with this. What the guy don't know, but he's already trying to drag in the Mississippi uh, Trappers Association and disparage them. And Chip Davis, the president, which is a friend of mine of the Mississippi Trappers Association, is Tim has volunteered to run their website because he's a tech guy. See, Tim can do really amazing things, like find out where people have lived before they moved to Mississippi, find out all their life stories, which we have. 
which if I was trying to be a peckerhead, we'd bring all that up. But you're trying to bring in Chip Davis, which is just trying to help out some trappers in the state and a trapping association is trying to build herself and you're wanting to put them in a bad light because your feelings are hurt because someone called you out on not being a member of the Trapper Association because no one personally invited you. Pompous. That's the word of the day, ladies and gentlemen. I don't make the rules. Jesus does. Amen. Then he goes on, don't spread lies about me, Tim. It'll get you more trouble than you don't want. Yesterday, here in Hines County, Mississippi, a judge issued a $50,000 judgment against people that posted lies on social media. So just to be clear, both of you, be damn sure. Keep that little word in mind because I'm going to show you the hypocrisy of Mr. Williams here in a second. Be damn sure you don't post anything that isn't true about me anywhere on social media. Hmm. He just brings up a lawsuit in Mississippi. He threatens us not to give any response, which is the way bullies like it. And because there's a $50,000 thing. Mr. Williams, have you looked at that case? It was a political case where a woman was taking false police reports out on a competition that she did not want to get elected. Trying to put that in the same format as me calling you pompous or telling you to F off, how dishonest of a person would even make that comparison? Then you start threatening us with the YouTube community and you talk about it being harassed or attempt to intimidate. Me telling you to F off is not harassing you, nor intimidating you. Me calling you a pompous ass is not harassing or intimidating you. That's not what those words mean. You should look those up in the dictionary before you try to threaten somebody with that because it is a threat because my business does have something to do with YouTube and you're used to hoping that I'm going to be so scared of what you're going to do that you're going to go to YouTube and get a shut off. Then he lets me and Tim know that we each have an intimidation thing on there. I wonder who put that on there, Mr. Williams. The second one can trigger a criminal violation of the law. Wow! I did not know that, Mr. Williams. That if someone gets triggered twice on YouTube, the police, the law, the violation of the law is going to come to my house and arrest me because I tell somebody he's pompous. I had no idea that YouTube community rules had that kind of power. That just amazes me, but thank you for letting me understand how that works. You or Clint, this is quotation, you or Clint post anything or ask me into, into not making any posts that are critical of your content, then I will take whatever legal actions are available to me. So now he's threatening us to sue us if he doesn't get to make all the critical comments that he wants to. Then he goes on and agrees that value added justifies a higher cost. But since I didn't say added value, that it's misleading. Let's talk about that added value. Have anybody ever seen uh, Goobers? You ever seen Goobers, Travis? I ain't got a clue what you're talking about. Peanut butter and jelly mixed together. Never seen that. No. Nope. I looked it up online. Goobers is a company made by Smuckers. They make jelly and they make peanut butter. At Target, you can buy a 16-ounce bottle of Goobers for $3.29. Now, it's got jelly and it's got peanut butter. If you just want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but you don't need a quart of peanut butter and jelly, buy the ounce, buy his thing, then you get to buy a bottle of Goobers for $3.29 when you can buy peanut butter and jelly for about $2.29 at the same store. See, the value added is if you just want, if you're just on the road and want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you can just stop and get a thing of that, put it on some bread, you got peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You did not have to spend all the money to get peanut butter and jelly in two separate jars. Value added. If you have a piece of high quality metal that's round stock and say four to five feet long, you can probably buy that for 90 to 110 bucks. But if you want a rifle barrel, you're gonna have someone machine it down. See what the machinist is doing 
is he's making a rifle barrel out of a commodity, which is the metal stock itself. So you're going to spend four to $500 on a really good barrel if you're going to be long distance shooting, but there's less ounces in that rifle barrel than there is in the metal stock. See, that's called value add. That's why you don't have to say it because everybody kind of understands it. Last example I'm going to give is Lunchables. I don't know why anybody feed it to their kids, but a lot of people do. I know you love them, Travis. You get 2.3 ounces of bologna in a Lunchables. Then you get about one ounce of cheese and you get like four crackers and a little thing of M&Ms or something like that. You can buy a whole pound of bologna for $1.79 right now at Walmart. Why do they sell more Lunchables than they sell more bologna? Because it's convenient. It's a value add. The parents don't have to think about it and the kids are going to drive them crazy until they get it. Value add it. They don't go, well, if you, you know, it costs you less per ounce if you buy a pound of bologna and a pound of cheese and a box of rich crackers and the whole thing of M&Ms. You can buy all that because that's cheaper per ounce. Could you imagine how long these commercials would be if you were the czar of what everybody had to say when it comes to advertising? It makes no sense whatsoever. Another quotation from him talking about my video, that would not have been misleading or deceptive. Who's making the video? Me. Claims that the savings between the two was 13 is absolutely a misleading statement. In quotation marks. Again, I'm giving a misleading statement. Yes, you are calling me a liar. Unless you're going to be Bill Clinton. What is the definition of is? Because I've got a question for you. If that's not savings... You get the value of these two in a convenient form. Just, just think of this as a Lunchable. You don't have to think about it. You just go use it. You just give it to your kids. They like that for some reason. So this is like a Lunchable. It's also kind of like Black Friday. TV is $500 every day of the year except for Black Friday. Now, you want to get into the TV on Black Friday because it's $300. Now, are you saving $200 if you don't spend $500 and you only have to spend $300? Does that make sense to you, Travis? No, <laughs> it made no sense to me either. So he's saying I'm misleading because, and I'm going to do the quotes here, you don't quote, I quote him and he's quoting himself, so it gets kind of confusing. You, quote, you don't, quote, save that amount of money. You spend less, 13 bucks specifically, because you choose to buy less product, exclamation point. That is not saving. That's buying less merchandise. Hmm. Have you went and got online and got on the Lunchable people and the Goober people and the uh, the rifle barrel people, and, and maybe if you buy some wood furniture, I mean, you should have been able to got that by the same ounces that they, the tree logger got from it, I guess, from the way that you're saving. How do you suppose someone saves any money then? I guess in your mind, you would have to buy this instead of this, but buy this for 43 bucks. I take your money. I send this to you in the mail with a coupon and then you send the coupon back to me and then I refund your money. Would that be considered savings? What in the world is savings to you if that's not savings? If you're saving 13 bucks, you're saving 13 bucks. If you're not spending $13, you're saving $13. Another quote from him, I think the video was misleading. Another quote from him, my first amendment rights Hmm, your First Amendment rights. Now, I don't make these rules. Jesus does. Amen. You have no First Amendment right on my YouTube channel. I am king of the jungle on my YouTube channel. You're going to find that out in about seven days because I'm leaving the comments up there. So everybody's going to watch this. is going to get to go read your foolishness. And then I'm going to ban you from ever putting comments on my YouTube channel because you have no right unless the king of my YouTube channel says that you can. 
Now you can say it to your wife, your girlfriend, your mistress, to the dude down the street. You can even get on your own YouTube channel and say it. You've got the First Amendment right to say that. You do not have the First Amendment right to say that on my YouTube channel. You're not a customer of mine. I don't know who you are. You're just a troll. No First Amendment rights here when it's far. I treat you the same as I would an anti. Another quote. Moreover, since you two have pissed me off, remember the pissed off part, that's him, Mr. Williams, I believe the best thing to do here is send this to the regulatory authorities or just let them review it. As a consumer, that's my right to do so. Are you a consumer? Can you show me a receipt where you're a consumer of mine, Mr. Williams? Are you just a busybody trying to stick your nose where it doesn't belong and practice your, tro your troll craft? Because I think that's what that really is. Send it. Please do. I don't care. The authority that you think you have as a non-consumer, because you need to look up what consumer means. You have to consume for me for you're a consumer of mine before you have rights as a consumer of mine. See, it's really simple. I don't make the rules. Jesus does. Amen. Your YouTube may restrict your, restrict your ability to do the platform. That's another quote from him. That's a threat. In the ad, if, if they did, you would deserve it. Pompous. Then threats of a lawsuit in the Mississippi. Where he's talking about the judge that I made just how ridiculous him trying to put those two together is. Quotation mark. Don't let your mouth, your foul mouth cursing direct you towards me to cost you $50,000. Is that a threat, Travis? Mm -hmm. If you were on a jury, would you see that as a threat? I looked it up online. It's illegal to do that. Then you pull out the victim card again, and you want to get the violins going so everybody feels sorry for you. Dude, we're tired of that crap. We see it all the time on the news and we, when we meet liberals, and everybody wants to be the most victimized person in the world because that's where their status comes from. Homie don't play that. See, golden trap, Deadpool shirt, bounces completely off of me. You start talking about your age. You're 16 years older than me. Then you start talking about your illnesses. Like, what's that got to do with you being a busybody? That does not excuse you. You get no courtesy from me whatsoever when you show no courtesy to me. Because you started it by coming to my channel and doing this. Then a trapper left a comment, and I find this very interesting because this is where the point, I think, really lies to all of this. Life on Freedom Creek. Sounds like you're trying to get some money, ding, ding, by poking a bear, which is me, and getting bit, which you are. That's pretty well said. My 80-year-old granddad has told me since I was old enough to remember you can call a liar a liar and he will take it. Call a gentleman.